glory to God. So he goes on to say, you have dwelt too long in this mountain. Israel was about to make a transition. They wandered for 40 years. Can you imagine? 40 years. And now they were about to settle down in a new land. Continuing reading in verse 7. He says, turn you and take your journey. We could stop right there for a long time. Turn you and take, take your journey. Yeah. It's time for a divine turnaround. It's time for you to get on the path that I called you to do 40 years before. So what had happened, that generation that came out of Egypt who experienced all those amazing miracles that, that happened in Egypt and saw all the miraculous provision and manna and the quails and the water and the rock and all the things, that supernatural things that happened, the, pow, the fire by night and the pillar by day that followed them, all these supernatural things. That, that generation was afraid to go into the promised land. They, tw the 12 spies were sent out. We all, all know the story. And the 10 came back with a bad report, and two came back with a good report. The two was, Jonathan, was Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. Joshua and Caleb were the only ones of that entire generation that was going to go in with this new generation yeah. into the promised land. So they were in transition, but they had to make a divine turnaround. This generation had to hear the word of God. This generation had to make a decision for themselves. You have to make a decision for yourself that as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Right? That's what Joshua said. He and his house, it doesn't matter what grandma did or whether they did it right or wrong, it matters what you say. Because God is wanting to hear what's coming out of your mouth. For 40 days, well, let me see, verse 7. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites and into all the places nigh thereinto, in the plain, in the hills, and the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and to Lebanon, and to the great river, the river Euphrates. Verse 8, Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to give unto them and to their seed after them. God still had his promise, his plan on his mind when he met these people. And even though that previous generation didn't believe, God had raised up a whole nother generation and they had the assignment and the, and the responsibility to believe because they needed to move into what God had promised. You know, this is a day of promise. This is a day when God's wanting to reveal his good promise to you personally and to your life and to this church and to, to the whole world, actually. He's never given up on, on the world. He sent his son, Jesus, and he, he created uh, believers. All of us are born again so that we can continue to share the good news of Jesus around the world. Amen. Amen. So, and he, so his promise of blessing all the families of the earth is still here. And, but what's needed is people that will rise up and believe it. Amen. Amen. And, and if you've been in a place of complacency, or maybe you've been timid, or maybe you're just like chomping at these, realize that today God is wanting me to declare to you that it's time for your divine turnaround. Amen. You're going somewhere. Amen. And you're going to go, you're going to be kicking it in high gear. I mean, sometimes when you're going far, you feel like, you know, I know God wants me to go here, but you almost feel like you have a rope tied around your waist and there's like a huge boulder behind you and you're just like, you're pulling and you, you just seem like you're moving in a lot of energy, but you're not really getting somewhere. But God is saying it's time. These things are coming off. The chains and the hindrances are coming off because he wants us to move up to another place, a deeper place, to the fulfillment of every dream and every promise that he's given us. He's just looking for somebody that'll say, yes, Lord. I believe it. It's mine. I'll take it. Woo, I think I got some warriors in the house. So for 40 days, Moses teaches this new generation. This whole book of Deuteronomy just covers a short period of time. And he wants them to stay faithful. He wants them to stay distinctive. Realize that they are set apart for him, for his glory. They are his. We are, we are, and we're the same way. He says, you are a royal priesthood. You're a chosen nation, a royal priesthood. He says that you're supposed to bring forth his glory and his praise. Amen? Amen. This 
was a time of transition. Here they were on the other side of the Jordan looking over into the promise. I'm tired of just looking over to the promise. I want to walk in every single promise God has for me. I want the same for you. I have walked in so many promises fulfilled, but there's still more to do. Even like he, I remember, I'm just reminded of when, when, when God spoke to Joshua and he says, you're an old man and there's still many, much land that you still have to possess. Now Joshua had done quite a bit, but God's promises are so big and he wants us to get it all done for him. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure how far I'm getting this sermon. (laughs) This was a time of of transition from Moses to Joshua, from the wilderness to the promised land, from nomads to farmers, from people with no land. You know, they were slaves for 400 years to people of the land. It was time for a divine turnaround. The def, Google definition, I Google turnaround, and it says this definition. It says an abrupt or unexpected change, especially one that results in a more favorable situation. An abrupt or unexpected change, especially one that results in a more favorable situation. Everybody's today, it's a new word. It's not an old word, but it's a word that people are sort of familiar with, a turnaround. In business, they use that term a lot. In business, the term turnaround means when a company or a, a, for a period of loss or poor performance, they move into a period of financial recovery and success. So that's what in the business realm with stocks and business, you know, Uh, public companies, you hear them talk about that. A turnaround may also refer to recovery of a nation or region's economy after a period of recession or stagnation. We're doing that here in the United States of America, praise the Lord. There's a turnaround happening. It also could refer to, it says, to uh, an, an individual whose personal financial situation improves after some time. So all of us want a financial turnaround, but we also need a spiritual turnaround. We need a mind turnaround, amen? We need every single thing working in God's direction, not in our own direction. This week I had a a, a pastor's widow called me and her husband passed away 10 weeks ago and she called me up because she says, Kathy, I don't know if I know anybody as successful as you and Jesse. And so, and I was wondering where is she coming from? And she says, because so I need some advice. She said, no, I don't need money. I just want, I want some advice from you on how to, what to do with my money. And so she just, she says, I looked into our, our finances and I didn't really pay attention to it a lot during the sickness or even before then, and I probably should have. But she says, I, I, I looked at it and I noticed that the things that we invested in had produced zero. There was, and she was, she was mad about it. Well, not angry, but she was just ready for her turnaround. She, she didn't use those terms, but I knew that's exactly what she wanted. She says, I'd like to know, I'd like you to know if you could tell me anything that would help me to get this thing going in the right direction. Well, I don't do that, but I gave her a name of someone that I thought could help her, and he is already helping her with that. But the point was, she didn't want to just exist. She wanted to do, like, make her money work for her. Now, that's on a practical sense, and all of us understand that because we don't want to be robbed from Right? When you make an investment, you want it to have a good return. And if it's not doing that, what do you do? You do something about it. You're not just going to sit back and say, oh, well, I guess it'll just be zero to, you know, forever. And I guess I'll go get a job washing windows or something. No, she said, no, this money was supposed to work for me. And I want to do something about it so that it changes. And so we talked and it was such a blessing to hear her and talk with her about that because she was determined to have a financial turnaround. I don't know, all of us can relate to that. But I want to use that example to realize that God also wants you to have a spiritual turnaround. He wants you to have a new way of looking at things. Instead of making your opinion based on what maybe you've done in your past or what's happened in your life or someone else's life, God wants you to open up your eyes and realize that his word is well able to help you no matter what it is that you face in life. Whether it's an attack on your body, this woman was experiencing an attack on her finances. 
But many times we have attacks that come along, launched against us in our relationships or in our businesses, or our promises and things that God wants us to have. But what God, had, no matter what the situation is, God wants us to realize that we can, even though we may be going on the road one way, he has a plan to turn it around and get it going in the right direction. Amen. Straighten up and fly right, as my sister-in-law used to say to her little kids. So turnarounds are important because they mark an upward shift or an improvement and an ex to experience a significant period. Even though you've experienced a significant period of negativity, you can turn things around and become not only just, you can become positive. Amen. Amen. And things can turn around for good forever. Hello, everybody. I'm Jesse DePlanis, and I'm so happy you're watching this video today. If you're enjoying our channel, please subscribe. You can hit the bell to get notifications as each new video is posted so you don't miss a single one. Then you share this video to your friends, your family, so they can be blessed by it. And I mean, as I said, they'll be funny, they'll be hilarious, and I promise you, if you watch it, by the end of it, you're going to feel good because I believe in bringing joy into people's lives. I mean that sincerely. And I tell people, say, does anything ever wipe that smile off your face? No. And thank God I got good teeth. Praise the Lord. So watch it and subscribe today. Thank you. And keep watching. You'll be blessed. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.